Hey everyone and welcome to this new tutorial. In this video we are going to see how we can make a stunning interior render inside Twinmotion. We are going to go over the light settings, the materials and the export settings. Let's get started. Hey guys, my name is Arne and welcome to this new video. Let's kick off this tutorial by taking a closer look at the light settings. When you look at the scene, all the light seems to come out of the window behind the curtain. This effect cannot be made with natural sunlight in Twinmotion, because the curtain is in front of the window blocking all the sunlight. We can solve this by using an area light added in the new Twinmotion 2020 version. This can be found in the library underneath the lights tab. Drag and drop an area light into your scene, and now let's have a closer look at the settings. Let's start with the intensity. The slider is fixed at 10,000, but manually you can go much further than that. We need to apply a greater number to get brighter and deeper light into the scene. Next, we have the color. Most area lights in the scene have a cool tint, which gives the space more of the white light effect. This is achieved by using a color higher than 6,000 Kelvin. And now we can adjust the size. We adjust the length and the width to our model, and when we put this in front of the window, try to imitate the measurements exactly. Apply this technique everywhere. Another example is the ceiling, where we do exactly the same. And now how do we apply all this into our scene? Let's watch it together. And guys, if this tutorial was helpful, please let me know in the comments down below. The first area lights are placed at the top of the ceiling. These point straight down. Important settings are the intensity, color and attenuation. The intensity is manually set to 1 million, which gives it a brighter light. The color is set to 6500 Kelvin. This gives the light a cold blue effect. And now the most important setting is the attenuation. The longer this distance, the more gently the light will move over the entire distance. Usually I use a distance around 40 to 60 meters. You can easily test this by dragging the slider up or down. Always set the shadows to off, or there will be an overwhelming amount of shadows that don't match the scene. The next area lights are placed in the window. These reflect the sunlight coming through the window. In this scene, a couple of different area lights are placed each time with a different depth or attenuation. This is to generate intense lights on objects close to the window, and softer light on objects further away in the scene. The settings for these area lights are not that different from those in the ceiling. We set the intensity back to 1 million, and the color is a bit colder this time, at around 7000 Kelvin. The big difference is the attenuation. These are set individually so that we get a nice light effect step by step. One difference is that the shadows are turned on. This is to create a natural sunlight effect and create a shadow as one would have with a normal sunlight. One important area light is the light that shines on the curtain itself. Because area lights can only illuminate one side, we also have to illuminate the curtain itself to get the effect that the sunlight is coming through the curtain. We give this a short attenuation to get a, a sharp light on the curtain itself. These area lights are also placed at an angle. You can easily do this by switching to the rotate tool and there are several ways to do this. The shortcut is to press number 5 on your keyboard. You can also do this by switching it manually on the toolbar at the bottom. You can also type in the number you want or drag it manually on the rotate bar to place it at the right angle. Next are the ceiling spotlights. These are rather decorative and only give a light glow. Each time I've placed a spotlight, I've also placed an omnidirectional light to give a little bit more glow to the spotlight. For the spotlight, a slightly warmer light was used, each time to give the room a little bit more contrast. The strength is also set to 1 million, and the omnidirectional light is set to a weak 5000 lumen. The radius is also set to its smallest. I've copied this setup to every other ceiling spotlight. You can always check the location of the lights by using the view and the clipping tools. 
Sometimes it can be easier to place the lights this way than having to guess in 3D. It's always best to take a view first and then use a clipping tool to go to the desired distance. This way you can see everything correctly. The other light points, such as a stroke light, are not specially configured. The small lamps should give the impression that they shine a soft light and reflect warm light as you can see on the wall behind the lamps. This gives that extra contrast and interrupts the otherwise dark blue wall. Now the materials. Almost all materials are from the Twinmotion library. Only the curtain is a custom made material. If you want to know more about how to make such a material, you can see it in my other tutorial of the coffee house on my YouTube channel. Some important materials are the floor, the walls and the fabric for the bed. For the floor, we use the olive tree parquet. We put a scale on a believable number and adjust the reflection so that it is a nice reflection. For the panel, we use a matte paint wall material. This material works perfectly with the light. To make the material more authentic, we use a grunge option and a bump map. The grunge option adds stains to the material. This makes the material look used or slightly older and this fits perfectly into the scene. It also makes it less boring and continuous. Be careful not to overdo it. The same goes for the bump option. This is set to only 3% and this gives the material a little bit more depth. You will see when we turn these two options off that the scene suddenly looks completely different. In general it can be said that the right materials make or break a scene. So try different materials until you find the right one for your render. For the bed we use different fabric materials. You can use one fabric and then put a different color on it by using the color slider. This sometimes gives nice new materials without having to import materials yourself. I can show you all the materials, but that's of little use. Let's move on to the shadow decals. This is also an important aspect to make the scene more convincing. You usually do this at the end of your work process to add extra detail into your render. As you can see, when I disable my decal folder, the render looks completely different and less convincing. A few important ones are the decals under and behind the bed, which give the room extra contrast. It also makes the scene much more interesting and less flat. You can find these shadow decals in the object folder, decals, and then move down at the bottom of the page. Drag them into your scene and adjust the scale, its opacity and the offset level. These are the most important settings. The opacity controls how dark the shadow is, and the offset indicates how high the shadow should be. It's also recommended to test this until you're satisfied with your result. Now the last part of the tutorial are the export settings. Let's start with the pictures. Now for this picture I have two examples, one with screen space reflection on and one with it off. SSR off ensures that the material does not absorb any other reflections. This is better in this scene because the material stays dark. In some interior it has to be on of course. But for example in a bathroom you usually have to turn this option off because there are too many reflective materials. Again test your render with the setting off and on to see which is best suited for your scene. For the videos you can work in different ways. You can make separate pieces and glue them together later, or you can make a whole video in one take. Everyone has their own preference on how they work. Usually I make movies from multiple parts because this makes it easier to rework parts without having to re-render the whole clip. To create one clip, press the add a new video part button each time to add a piece. Set the time and the other settings and you will be able to render your video in one piece. If you make multiple video parts, you have to select multiple videos in your export settings and paste the pieces back together in a different video editing program. That's it for today guys, I hope this helps you out. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Twinmotion content. And if this tutorial was helpful, please let me know in the comments down below.